So if you're not using dynamic input, why not? Why are you not using dynamic input? It's one of the, the better features that uh, Autodesk has added to AutoCAD over the past 10 years. Uh, it really can change how you're, how you're using your AutoCAD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to turn dynamic input off. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom here, and I've turned dynamic input off. So now if I come in here and I create a line, notice that there's nothing happening on the screen. If I pick a point here, there's no dimensions. I don't really have a size here. And if I wanted to find this line, I got to go old school and I got to go like, I want to go at and notice how it's going down to the command line. So it's coming down to the command line here um, instead of on the screen. So it becomes this really bad tennis match. So I'm going to go at 10 comma 10 and define it that direction. Um, so now I want to come in here and I want to do a, I want to do a polyline edit. So I'm going to do polyline edit and it's like, oh, well, what's, what's the step? Oh, I got to go down to my command line. Oh, select the polyline. Oh yeah. So I pick it. Oh, wait, what's it looking for? Oh yeah, I gotta go back to my command line. So again, we're in this really bad tennis match as we're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn dynamic input back on. Now watch what happens when I do a polyline edit. So I'm just gonna type PE. Notice that I get this nice, you know, you type PE, but did you really mean P ellipse or parameter? Or what, what were you after? So I get this nice on-screen display. So I'm gonna hit enter. Ooh, select the polyline. The, the text is right there. So I'm gonna pick that and do you want to convert into? Yes, I would. And now I got the menus. So at a bare minimum, you don't have to go back down to the command line. In fact, you could probably turn the command line right off because everything will appear on the screen. Now let's come in here and let's define a line again. So I'm going to click the line command. I'm going to pick a point. And now notice these nice dimensions that appear. So what I want to do here is I'm going to define this line at 30 units. Now here's the key to the whole thing. So if you've been kind of watching this and not really paying attention, here's the one spot that you need to pay attention on. So I'll give you a second to zone right in here. The tab key. The tab key is the key to this whole thing here. Because if I was to hit enter right now, it's going to take the 30 units. That's, that's perfect. But it's just going to go with whatever angle it's at. By hitting the tab key, notice how it locks the 30 in and bounces me over to the angle. So now I can say, well, this was supposed to be 30 and I can keep hitting the tab key and changing values until I'm satisfied. Once I'm satisfied with the inputs, I hit enter as I normally would and it goes off to the next step. So now what I can say is, well, the next one here is supposed to be 20. I'm going to tab over at 15 degrees and I'll hit enter and we can see how to find that line. So the tab key is the key to using that dynamic input. Now the same thing will happen with existing geometry. So let's take this center line here. Well, this happens to actually be a block here. Let's take this line here, and I'm going to select this endpoint here, and notice that very similar um, options appear here. Now it's again, it's the tab key. So right now I'm actually at a delta, so I'm actually adding distance to it. If I hit tab, now I'm actually at the overall length. If I tab again, now I'm at the, the delta angle, the overall angle. So I can actually kind of bounce back and forth here between existing values. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add on 10 units and I'd like to add on 10 units at 10 degrees. So we can see how I was able to go in there and make that change. So you can actually take your existing geometry and modify it with the same inputs that you were using um, when you were, as, as you were creating the geometry. Okay, now if I haven't sold you this um, yet and you're thinking, well, it's okay, but it's not really working exactly how I want. Well, there's actually a whole slew of options to modify dynamic input. If I right click here and go into my dynamic input settings, what you can do is kind of pick and choose. And you can kind of say, you know what, I really like the dimensions, but I don't really like the pointer input, so let's turn that off. Or I don't really like to see the additional tips, or I don't like to see the command prompting. I just like the dimensioning, that's all I want. So now if I come in here, and I start line, notice that nothing's showing up on the screen, but the minute I start dimensioning, then those dimensions appear. So you have some control over what you see and what you don't see. So let's turn those back on. Next, what I can do is come in here and actually change the appearance of it. It's too big, it's too small, it's not the right color. Maybe I'd like it to be you know, slightly transparent. Maybe I'd like it to be slightly smaller. And color-wise here, what I'd really like here is I'd really like it to be um, yellow so it really stands out or I'd like the text to be red so it really stands out. So now if I come in here and I start the line command, notice that the text is, is red as I defined, it's smaller um, and it's slightly transparent now. So you can, I guess I showed it a little bit bigger but you can kind of see the line through it now. 
So I was able to, to control or massage the colors on it. Again, I'm going to right click on my dynamic input here, go into the settings. Let's go into the pointer settings options here and you can change how you prefer to see things. So right now it's going to default to relative. So if I pick a point and start keying in coordinates, it's going to default to relative. With dynamic input off, it's always going to be absolute and you're always going to have to put in the, the act character to define that. Whereas here you can say, you know what, I never work in absolute, I always work in relative, um, I'm going to do that. What I can also say is, you know what, just show me the point data all the time. You know, I don't really need to, uh, I always like to see kind of where I'm at, so I'm going to set that to all the time. I'm going to go into settings for the dimensions here, and I don't know if you noticed, but it was modifying the line, it only showed me two parameters at a time. I'm actually going to show all the values here, and I can actually change this and say, you know what, I don't really want the um, angle change ever. All I really want to see is the absolute angle. So I'm going to click OK to that. I'm going to click OK. And now notice that my dynamic input's always on. Remember how I said always show it, not just when I'm in a command. Also notice now when I come in here and pick this, and I want to stretch this, that you know at first here it's showing me the delta. If I tab again, tab, it's only going to show me, um, it's not going to show me the delta angle on that. Okay, so again, right click dynamic input settings, um, you know, your drafting tooltip appearance was here. You know, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to restore. Oops, I just want the current element to go back to where it was. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put that back to just when a command's active and I'm going to say two at a time. So I just went in there and set it back to what it was. So there's your dynamic input. Again, I suppose if you, if you prefer drafting an AutoCAD like it's 1995, then by all means turn it off. Um, but if you're not using it now, um, you're, you're solely missing out because it is one of the greatest productivity enhancements, especially for 2D uh, work with an AutoCAD that Autodesk has done probably in the past 20 years.